Hi guys, JT back again, and this time you join me in our fabulous refurbished lodge here at the Sportfish Game Fishing Centre. And it's been a bumper winter here on Haywards Farm Lake. Um, the fishing's been pretty much off the charts, crazy. Um, we've had records falling left, right and centre, some massive brownies, some great rainbows, some really impressive bags of two and four fish, plus some very big numbers on catching release up into the 20s, which is pretty damn good going for anywhere. Um, but I know a lot of you guys, you put your fishing tackle away sort of the end of September, October time and you take the winter off, perhaps you're shooting. Um, so now it's coming to, to March, it's the perfect time to start getting your stuff together. Fingers crossed, it looks like spring might be in the air. Days are starting to get a little bit longer and uh, dare I say it warm up a little bit at times. Um, and just getting all your stuff ready for the start of the season to make sure you hit the ground running. So for me, I like to go through all of my stuff. I'm, I'm, dare I say I'm a little bit uh, anal when it comes to sorting out my stuff. I'll take all my lines out, all of my reels out, um, and I'll make sure that they're all in perfect condition. Now, I'm quite fortunate this winter, I've, I took the step and I replaced all of my lines with the new Rio in touch series. So every single one of my lines is brand new, so I know that they're all in tip top condition. But for some of you guys that have had your lines a few seasons perhaps, um, best advice for you, pull all of your fly lines off your spools. Just have a check along the fly line coating, making sure it's not damaged or cracked in any way. Um, really good idea, get yourself one of these little cleaning kits. It's um, relatively expensive, lasts you a long time, but it makes your fly line last a lot better. It'll be slicker, it'll cast further, it'll be much easier to use and gets all that dirt and grime off. And it's just a case of a little cleaning solution and a cleaning pad. Pop a bit of that on the pad and just wipe it down the fly line. On the end of each of your fly lines, if you're using braided loops, if you haven't got welded loops on them already, just double check, make sure they're not starting to fray, that there's no cracking near it. If there is, it's a really quick and simple job to do, just change them out for some Roman Mosa Mini Cons. Um, very easy to put on, I know a lot of you guys struggle with some of the more conventional longer braided loops, but these guys, dead easy to put on, a little bit of the super glue on the top of the, uh, the silicon sleeve, capillary action sucks it back down and that braided loop's going nowhere. So really good thing to, to make sure you carry in the bag with you as well. Have a check over all your leader materials, uh, I'm sure like me, you probably end up going through your bag and thinking, oh I didn't even remember I had that, because um, there's so many pockets on these bags. Check if some of these materials are, aren't too old, make sure they're not starting to degrade. Um, the last thing you want to do is, is hook into a fish and, and snap your leader because it's not tip-top condition. So just go through your materials and just change them out if you need to so that you know that you've got fresh stuff for the start of the season. It's not an expensive thing to do and it's worth it in the long run. Um, I'll go through my waistcoat as well, making sure that everything, like my floatants and my sinkants are there. So the little bottles of gink and zinc, I'll make sure that they're full. Last thing I want to do is to get to the fishery and find out that I've got no floating left. Um, when it comes to my presentation, I use a lot of the, uh, the mud, full as earth type mixture, um, but these do have a tendency to, uh, to dry out, so just check and see if it needs rehydrating. Um, if it's gone all dry, then just pop out and get yourself another pot. It's uh, inexpensive stuff, but really does make a lot of difference when it comes to your fishing. Um, your fly boxes, most important thing out there, it's the last thing between you and your fish. And if you've uh, done what a lot of people do and finished your season and just thrown your flies back into your box damp, then you might find that you open your box to a horrible mess of rusty hooks. Um, so just have a check through your fly boxes. Make sure that there's nothing in here that's uh, starting to, to rust in any way, shape or form and that they're all in good condition. Um, you want to make sure that when those fish eat your fly, you're getting a good solid hook up and keeping a hold of that fish. So it doesn't take you long. Have a check. Just go through your fly boxes. And then hopefully, once you've got together, you've got all of your waterproofs, your waders, wading boots, and everything else that you could possibly need. Just double check them all over, make sure your nets haven't got any holes in them. You know, potentially we leave things in sheds and those little mice get to them and uh, cause us all kinds of havoc. So just double check over everything, make sure everything's nice and clean and ready to go. And then hopefully when you start your 2017 season, you're going to have a fantastic time. Um, the weather's been on the up, the fishing's been incredible. So hopefully you've picked up a few useful hints and tips there on uh, getting your stuff organised for the 2017 season. For those of you guys that have been out through the winter, I hope it continues in the same vein of form as it has done so far. And for you guys hitting the river banks and lake sides for the first time, all the very best for 2017 and tight lines. And here's to another cracking fishing season.